Hello everyone and welcome back to the video. Today we're going to be talking about the new update, the new patch that's coming down. Uh, and this also comes to the DLC and it's going to be dropping tomorrow. Uh, I think if you did pre-order the DLC, you can play tonight, April 27th. If not, just wait till the 28th. It's all good. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a big update plus the DLC. So if you did get the DLC, uh, you have to pay for it. But it's like 10 bucks, I think. And you get three new uh, civilizations, three new campaigns. It's a lot of content, guys. It's super worth it. I highly recommend you pick it up if you have the means. Uh, and if not, you're still going to enjoy a really big update, guys. And this update's really good. I, I give it a brief look over. I didn't check the balance changes. Though. I kept it a secret. But yeah, I give it a brief look over and the update looks really good. I'm going to highlight uh, the important parts of the update here and leave the rest for you guys to scroll through in your own time. Link to this, uh, to this page will be in the description below. So if you guys want to check it out yourself, go through it step by step. I'll leave it there for you guys to check it out. Also, real quick, before I go into the updates, I'm going to be streaming tomorrow uh, around noon Eastern. Uh, I'm going to be trying out the DLC on my Twitch channel, uh, playing the new civs, trying it out, really getting back into the string of things for Age of Empires. I'm super excited. And also one more announcement. My build orders, as I've told you guys a couple months ago, are now completely free. All those build orders I spent a lot of time on, a lot of energy on the past two years that are all for free. And some of them are a little bit outdated, but the skeleton and the core of those build orders are all super good. So I highly recommend guys just join my Discord link below. It's one click. It's absolutely free. You get access to a nice PDF document with like 20 build orders for AV2. And a lot of them are really, really solid. You can tweak them a little bit to make them a little bit better for this day and age. But uh, some of them are a little bit outdated. But overall, the structure of them are super good. And I really just want people to make use of them. So join my Discord, guys. Absolutely free. Just go ahead and try them out. They're really high quality if I say so myself. And yeah, that's it for now. Let's hop into the patch and give you guys a quick rundown of what to do uh, and what to, uh, yeah, what, what to be aware of, pretty much. Okay, so um, Dynasty's Indie Events is an event. If you guys are interested in this, I'm going to skip it over, though. If you guys want to pause, feel free to do so. Uh, so there's some event stuff. All right, so for the game, uh, there's a couple of things that I want to highlight here. Um, so, uh, yeah, um, they fixed some crash issues. Uh, and some graphic issues. Nothing too crazy here. I think this one looks interesting though. The cursor now just as expected when using the unload function of a transfer ship and hover the, cur the cursor over land. This always used to like be buggy for me. So I hope this fixes. Uh, it's a small thing, but I hope this fixes some of the problems I was having with it. Uh, the rest is pretty okay. Uh, for the UI. Uh, so a couple of things for the UI, I think. Was it the UI? I don't remember where it was. Um, uh, 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 uh. Yeah, map pool selection screen now saves check boxes correctly. Before it used to like bug for team games all the time. I think now it's a little bit better. Hopefully that is uh, very solid. They fixed a lot of other stuff as well. Kind of corrected a few things, which is really nice. Always like to see work on these kind of things uh, take place. Um, settings, nothing really too crazy here, I, f I feel like. Um, uh, some nice quality of life stuff here fixed. Uh, okay, this is not what I want to talk about here. Multiplayer. So this is really important because... Um, so join or spectate via, via URL is not working. That was such a big bug before. I'm so happy this is working now. I hope it works properly because uh, that's going to make casting games a lot easier. Um, remember my guest ELO series, this is going to make it easier. Very nice. Uh, MVP badges cannot be awarded to two players in the same team. That was a small glitch. They fixed it. Awesome stuff. Players are not muted by default in multiplayer games anymore. Amazing change. That was a really annoying bug. You don't know if your opponent is talking to you or not until you check. Uh, so now they're not going to be muted, which is amazing. And then my personal favorite, recently played players are now displayed in chronological order over time of, of, time, uh, of play time. So if you're playing against someone today you, you, and you want to play against him again, he's going to be displayed at the top of the list, easy to find him. Super good for hosting tournaments or for playing tournaments. Like let's say I play against, I don't know, NBL. I play a game with NBL. It's game two. He beat me. I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm salty. I just want to get right back into the game two. Boom, he's right there, top of the list, invite, and we're good to go. I don't have to type his name in. Uh, and then search like the brackets and all that stuff. It's a really good change. Uh, super quality of life. Okay, gameplay. This is the best part of the patch. I haven't checked the balance. This is the best part of the patch. Using the attack move command no longer instantly speeds up specific units to catch up with the rest of the formation. Players are abusing this like crazy. And it was the most unfun thing to deal with, especially in KOTD, where like literally knights are useless because the uh, actually KOTD and there's a tournament before that, I think it was a 2v2 tournament, me and Lee were playing. And players against us were just completely abusing the attack move. Like knights, I was playing knights with crossbow. You cannot catch them. They're literally gliding away from you. And it became super popular and super annoying to deal with. So now it's completely removed. Attack move no longer gives you that speed up for the expos. So yeah, knights, this is a big buff to knights back into the meta at high level. So I think knights are going to be slightly better now, slightly more viable. Uh, attack move command now has an extremely short delay before units moving to the target location start attacking for the first time. This is exactly the same as patrol, guys. 
So attack move is exactly the same as patrol, it, it's just that the units don't go back to the initial location uh, like patrol does. Uh, monks with relics no longer accept a drop-off order or an unrelated building, which causes them to stop. Um, I'm not sure what this is, but maybe you guys know about it. Melee units tasked to attack units uh, using attack move micro no longer occasionally turn idle. Good. We would have siege towers unload units to be more consistent. Fine. Villagers now start reseeding the depleted farms after being ungarrisoned onto them from the town center. Really nice change. Yeah, I like that. When being tasked to attack a gate, trebuchets and formations will now pick the closest part of the gate as the target. I really like that as well. Uh, yeah, really nice quality of life changes here and obviously like bug fixes. Super good. Uh, this is a huge part of it as well. I, I told you guys this patch was like huge and like really good. So players are no longer able to see chopped trees and resource depletion graphics through Fog of War, guys. This is insane. So basically, you would be able to know if your opponent is taking wood just by seeing the chopped trees in the Fog of War. Uh, so if you've scouted that place before, but then you left, your opponent was not using that forest, then 10 minutes later, you haven't scouted the area again. It's completely fogged. And not the black, not, not the black fog, but the gray fog. Then if he uses that wood, you get to see it, uh, that he's using that wood and you can go raid. So this is like um, a, a really nice way to know where to be with your army. They're removing that, so now you have to scout a lot more. That's all it changes. You have to scout a lot more. You can't rely on just seeing if your opponent is chopping trees from distance now. Uh, I think it's a good change overall, but it's gonna really change how we uh, play the mid game and how we raid, because now you're able to be a lot more sneaky. It's not gonna have that much of an effect, but it, it will come up here and there. Players can no longer see unbuilt foundations of enemy players if treaty is active. Fair enough. Now there's a little bit of a glitch. Uh, villagers who are tasked to gather before being attacked by a boar will no longer attempt to fight back. Thank you. Instead of moving to the target location, this prevents inconsistent behavior on during boar and sending the lure back to gather instead of issuing a direct move command. This is absolutely massive. It's going to fix a lot of misclicks. Uh, at the top level and even in lower level, I am sure uh, a lot of those were lost because of this. So let me explain it real quick. Before, if you're if you're running back from a boar, you hit it, hit the boar once or twice, run back, and if you click a sheep under your town center, your villager will attack the boar once it gets hit again, and it will try to fight the boar and just stand still and die half the time. So and now, if you click the sheep by accident, no problem. He's still gonna go to the sheep even if he gets hit. Amazing change. Uh, fixing the issue with AI player gates, it doesn't really matter for most, but if it matters to you, sick. Line of sight distance check is now ignored for fishing ships and looking for the next closest fish resource node. Oh, it, oh, that's so good. That's so good. So if I understand this correctly, they're no longer going to be like going for shore fish if there's nothing, if there's no uh, deep sea fish in sight. They're just going to go look for it. Uh, I think that's good. We'll see how that plays out. It's no longer possible to see resource life bar through fog of war when using the macro, Marco cheat. Okay, I don't know. I don't cheat. Uh, a clean player here. Human town centers can be repaired in the feudal age even if the player has more than two. Okay, that wasn't the case before. More than two? How are you gonna have more than two? I guess it's a special map. The winged historic upgrade is now available on auto research to Poles and Lithuanians in full texture games. Okay, that's fine. All right, cool. Now the juicy stuff, we're gonna skip the campaign if this applies to you, awesome. Civilization balance, this is the juicy stuff of the past year. I haven't checked it out, so I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys my raw reaction here. Let's take a look at it. So general. Town standards can be repaired even if the player owns exactly zero stone. I actually don't know if this is a good change or a bad change. So if you guys didn't know beforehand, you actually needed at least one stone to repair a town center, even though repairing a town center does not cost stone, it only costs wood. So now you, you actually don't need to have stone, which makes, this is, I like this personally. Like personally as a player, I love this because I'm always getting seats pushed um, and then I have to go get some stone to repair my town center if I already spent my stone. But now, if I'm getting siege push, I'm on 3TC, I could easily just re repair my town center. I don't need to mine a stone or use a market or anything like that. It's actually a really good change in, in terms of like how it, consistency and how it works, but it drastically nerfs, it doesn't drastically nerf, but in some situations it could nerf the attacking push because it's now easier to just repair your town center. But I do like the change overall, it's really good. Siege unit and ships are now resistant to armor, ignoring attacks similar to buildings. Um, I'm not sure what this, uh, yeah, this is like lightest versus the lightest, I guess. Um, so I guess the lightest one, this is a small thing, I guess. All right. Berbers, janitor food cost decreased from 50 to 40. Well, that's a really, that's a really solid buff. I think we might see the janitor actually. It's 10 food guys. That's 10 food. Um, so the problem with the janitor is that it's really hard to mass it because it's super expensive and you can only start in castleage, but now it might be more viable to go for the janitor. And it was already decent in certain situations before. So I think janitor might be a good counter now um, to some archers, uh, especially stuff like Britons. Like Berbers used to struggle with Britons in some cases, Britons mines, janitor might be the solution to that now. Bohemians, monasteries are no longer affected by the wood discount bonus. Very nice, big nerf to the Bohemians, especially on arena. Clowns are gonna be happy about that. 
Hoofnees attack damage and attack bonus values decrease from 55 to 50, and uh, the blast radius from 85 to 80.80. Um, some small nerfs to Bohemian late game and mid game. Pretty good, I like it. Especially for Arena, it's gonna be a really nice nerf for the Bohemians. I think they're still gonna be really strong though, so don't sleep on them just yet. Burmese, new civilization bonus. Battle elephants have plus one melee and plus one pierce armor. Uh, ooh, that's a civ bonus, okay. How did that effect reduce from one plus one plus two to plus one plus one? So they gave them a bonus and then they make their unique tech. So now it's the same, they just get an extra melee armor and they start with the extra pierce armor. It's a little bit weird, but yeah, the, the final effect is the same, they just get an extra melee armor basically. Manipur cavalry cost change from 650 food and 400 gold to 400 food, 400 gold, fair enough. Um, I mean, this, this it's pretty good. Um, this is a good this is a good tech for late game. Elite and Rambai train time changed from 21 seconds to 18 seconds. That's really good because Elite and Rambai are actually kind of weak. Um, and just a Rambai in general, like they're, they're pretty weak. So this, this is going to let you mass them faster. I actually really like this change. It's for Rumi's really nice. Uh, all right, Cumans. Cumin mercenaries now enables training of five uh, free Elite Kipchaks per castle owned, including castles built at a later time. Ooh, that actually makes it interesting. That might make it more viable because before it gave you a flat 10 per player. Now it can give you a lot more than that. I can imagine if you have 10 castles late game, guys, that's 50 free Elite Kipchaks per person, right? Is that per person? Or is that just for the Cumin player? I think that's uh, per person, which is insane. Mercenary Kipchaks no longer require the Imperial Age to become available for Cumin ally players. Dude, that's so sick. So you can literally get five free, if you, you can literally go like, I don't know, like Frank's Castle Rush in Castle Age, then your Imperial Age Cubans who's been booming gets this upgrade, and then all of a sudden the Franks player who's castle pushing in Castle Age can just start making free elite Kipchaks from this castle. So he says three castles forward, he can make 15 for free, and that supports his push. Pretty good, it's gonna be a niche situation for, to when this comes up, but it's actually really solid, I really like this. Mercenary Kipchak train time from 20 to 12 seconds. Dude, this is some big buffs. They really wanna push this tech and make humans a little bit more uh, flexible when it comes to like playing team games, so really solid, love it. Ethiopians no longer receive bonus resource at the start of the game in games with feudal or later starting age. Empire Wars, shout out to Red Bull, please come back. Uh, okay, Hindustanis. Imperial Camerider upgrade cost decreased from 1200 to 600 to 1500, but their attack damage decreased from 9 to 8. Um, I think that's actually a, an overall buff in practice, but it's going to be an overall nerf in total like late game stats. But I think in practice, this is a buff because 300 resources and getting this upgrade faster, you get this upgrade for like the HP, I think mainly, uh, and like just like how tanky they become. So yeah, this is a in practice buff, but late game, it's a nerf obviously because you're having a weaker army. Uh, all right, team bonus for Incas replaced with spearmen and skirmishers plus two line of sight. It's gonna maybe help their spear skirm like uh, tower rush and might be helpful in, in some team games if you have like a, a, a you know a messy map on the chaos pits and you have like Byzantine Inca kind of gameplay it could be okay but it's not the biggest deal still better than their farm bonus though for Khmer ballista elephant attack increased from 8 to 10 for the base version and 9 to 11 for the D version highly disagree with this oh that's so bad ah this, this unit is going to be absolutely insane I highly disagree with that they were already really strong when masked. Like that's the thing. This, this unit was really troll because it's hard to get to. But when you get to it, it's super strong. So maybe maybe I'm wrong on this one, guys. Let me know in the comments if you think this unit could be too strong or if it's totally fine. Um, but I think giving it two attack is too much. I, I would love to see it just plus one attack. That's it. Two attack feels too much. This unit's gonna be very strong. And Khmer didn't need the buff. That's the problem, you know. Khmer were already insane. Why give them a buff just because you want to see the unique unit? Not a fan of this change at all. Koreans, Elite War Wagon based wood cost increased from 115 to 125. Really good change. War Wagon is way too strong. I think they should make the skirmishers deal more damage to it, to be honest, but that's fine. Uh, Lithuanians, Elite Lightus now deal the correct amount of damage to dark and feudal age houses. Fair enough. It's really random. Fish and fish traps are now properly affected by the Mayan civilization bonus of longer lasting resources. Okay. Uh, fair enough. Portuguese. Oh, that's really good for water maps, actually, if they were not doing that before. Okay. Portuguese, Vittoria wood and gold resource generation rates adjusted from 1 wood and 0.7 gold per second to 0.7 wood and 1 gold per second. So just flipping them, good for late game, I guess. Food and stone generates uh, generation rates remain unchanged, fair. Uh, yeah, fine. Uh, Saracen's Elite Mamluk no longer has the ar Archer Armor class. Oh my god, that's so big. That's so big, because before Skirmisher was a soft counter to Mamluks, especially in 1v1, 
Now it's not a possibility. So now your best play against Mamluk is going to be either uh, mass halbs, so you can just like flood them with halbs, or you're going to need to go like Arbless or Heavy Cav Archer. Even Heavy Cav Archer is kind of bad because if the Mamluks come up close, they're going to be shredding them. But probably Arbless is your best bet. If you don't have Arbless, it's going to be a tough time versus the Mamluks, I think. Because they're going to be taking like no damage from skirmishers. So uh, that's a big bonus. Zilichi is now available for research in Castle Age. Madrasa, Madrasa has been removed. New Imperial Age, unique technology, counterweights. Trebuchet and Magnal line, plus 15% attack, cost 650 food and gold. Uh, it's pretty good for late game. This is good for late game. This buffs their late game. And Zilichi and Castle Age is actually really big. It's going to make Alden Castle Age really strong for Saracens. Haha, <laughs> that's pretty sick. Alden Camels, you're going to have... You're literally going to have 150, 150 HP camels in Castle Age. That's so strong. 150 HP cast, Castle Age camels. That's so crazy. This is good. Keep an eye out for Saracens, guys. All right. Sicilian's Dungeon Sergeant time train changed from 20 seconds to 16 seconds in Feudal Age and in Castle Age, matching the train time of sergeants trained in castles. Fair. doesn't really matter. Hobrick cost changed from 500 food, 400 gold. Oh, this is this is good. Yeah, this tech is completely ridiculous. I mean, this should just change this tech. It's, it's so it's so overpowered. Um, but yeah, they made it more expensive, so it's harder to get to that late game Sicilian Cavalier. <clears throat> Pretty good change, though. I like it. They're trying to push it to more of like a dungeon dungeon sergeant uh, kind of game. But Sicilian's just it's a really weird civ. I'm really not a fan of how the civ is balanced, to be honest. But they're trying their best to fix it, I guess. Slavs Orthodoxy replaced with de Definites. Replaces 40% of castles and towers. Stone cost with wood. Costs 400 wood and 200 gold. Uh, it's such a weird bonus for Slavs to get. This is literally just going to help you get to Boyer's late game. Yeah, but this is... The, don't get fooled, guys. This is... Like, spending wood in mid game is bad. So, if like getting this tech, if you think, oh, I'm going to drop a bunch of castles, it's going to be so cheap. It's not. Like, spending wood is actually really hard in mid game. This is a purely late game tech, I think. And I don't know how much that is going to be uh, useful, but we'll see. The Taurus Slamming Camels not deal 25 bonus damage against siege units. Doesn't really matter. Bonus damage against buildings increased from 100 to 200. That's whatever. Vietnamese paper money effect replaced by Lumberjacks slowly generate gold in addition to wood. I think that sucks. Paper money costs increased from 500 wood, 300, 500 food, 300 wood to 600 wood, 350 gold. Yeah, this sucks ass. <laughs> it's not going to be good at all. Uh, units and buildings. Camel Rider line of sight increased from 4 to 5. That's actually good. Heavy Scorpion Pierce armor increased from 7 to 8. No, man. Why are you buffing Heavy Scorpion? It's already fine, no? Like, in the situation where Scorpion's good, this is, like, it's it's already really good. Like, it's a trash killer. If you give them an extra Pierce armor, it's going to make it, like, really really hard for Arbalest to even kill them, Heavy Cav Archer to kill them. Uh, I mean, we'll see. I was not a huge fan of Heavy Scorpion. I, I thought they were, like, really strong when they are used and just niche, but... Um, it is what it is. We might be seeing them a little bit more often now. Feudal Age Watchtower and Dungeon hit points increased from 700 to 850 and 1000 to 1250 respectively. Okay. Tower Rush might be back in the meta. That's a big change. Yeah. Tower Rush might be back in the meta, especially to counter Fast Castle. So that is interesting. Uh, Elite Elephant Archer upgrade time increased from 60 to 80 seconds. Uh, it's fine. Elephant Archers are now trained in the Archery range, can no longer be trained in a castle. Elephant Archer train time increased from 25 seconds to 34 seconds. Elephant Archer hit points decreased from 280 to 230. Elite version hit points decreased from 330 to 280. So they're nerfing it. So, okay, Elephant Archer Pierce armor decreased from 3 to 2. Elephant Archer Cavalry armor, <laughs> Cavalry Archer armor decreased from negative 2 to negative 7, resulting in additional damage received by units with an attack bonus versus the Cavalry Archer armor class. Okay, easy to kill them with scrims and hubs. Elephant Archer attack bonus with buildings and stone walls removed. Elephant Archer attack accuracy reduced from 100 to 70. Elite version is 100 to 85. Uh, cost is reduced from 100 food 70 gold to 90 food 70 gold. And movement speed is increased a little bit. So they're making it an archery range unit and they're kind of changing the stats to make to fit that role. It's, it, I can't predict how this is going to play out from now, but it's going to be a re regional unique unit for the Indian subs that are coming out. And I, I think it's going to be interesting, but I still don't think it's going to be like a go-to option. We'll see though. Skirmishers now deal zero bonus damage versus the Cavalry Archer Armor class. What? Resulting, resulting in additional damage when attacking units with negative values of Cavalry Archer Armor. Can someone explain this? I don't understand this. Can, can I still make Skirmishers versus Cav Archers and Conks, please? Please let me have skirmishers versus conquistadors. It's the only counter, bro. I, I'm telling you. 
Oh my god, I don't know what this means. Let me know in the comments, guys. It's really important. Please, hopefully you guys have watched to this point. Map balance. We'll read a little bit of Arabia, guys, and then we'll probably call this video. So, uh, for Arabia, increase the probability of generating forests closer to players' town centers. I like that. The uh, map was really bad before. Increase the probability of generating larger forests. Um, okay, I like that. Decrease the probability of ponds generating a forest surrounding players' town centers. like it. Decrease the probability of large amounts of elevation generating around the players' town centers. I like it. It's kind of fixing Arabia here a little bit from the KOTD mess that it was. Extra herdable animals now generate further apart, making them easier to find. Okay. Map now scales more appropriately to, on unconventional setups. Okay. Introduce a varying number of cliffs on the map. Okay, I like that. So they're fixing Arabia basically, which is nice. We'll see how that plays out. And yeah, that's going to be pretty much it for this video, guys. A lot of other things. If you guys are interested in modding and scripting and scenario editor, of course. Uh, ongoing investigation and uh, yeah so what's on the horizon guys super excited uh, for this new DLC and new patch guys it's really big news uh, thanks for watching this video once again I'll be streaming tomorrow uh, and I'll be putting out an announcement on my YouTube and Discord if you haven't joined my Discord free build orders uh, link in the description uh, and uh, yeah I've really enjoyed reading through this patch and I'm excited to try it out tomorrow see you guys there take care and bye for now